of national conference in advances in science, engineering, and technology. For the plenary talk, uh, we are having the guest, Dr. K. Prakash, Vice President, Belmont. Uh, I invite Dr. P. M. Zoshi, sir, to felicitate and introduce this. Our principal doctor is the professor. Please take the case of the big thing we talk. I request Dr. P. M. Joshi to introduce our chief. Uh, guest for the painting. Namaskar. Uh, I'm very much delighted to introduce to the August gathering here a renowned uh, personality in industry who is constantly involved in not only developing technology, but he is involved in developing talent also. So he is a good academician as well as he is a good researcher. He is a, he is a, a good innovator, having more than 30 years of experience in, uh, in industry. Uh, he is also guiding few of PG students as well as uh, doctoral degree students uh, in the COEP. And fortunately, uh, he is also the member of the Industry Advisory Board for Electrical Engineering. At our so I, I, I am immensely happy to welcome such a personality. Uh, 
ruled by virtue of his uh, talent, his experience, and his career orientation has proved himself as one of the best asset for the society. Uh, Dr. Prakash has uh, pursued his doctoral degree from IIT Bombay. He was from System and Control uh, Department. Uh, he pursued his master degree from uh, COEP and uh, uh, he pursued his uh, bachelor degree from Muzaffar Institute of Technology. I present um, Dr. Prakash is uh, working as uh, Vice President and Head of R&D for Electronic Division at Rock. Uh, he comes with uh, more than 30 years of experience in R&D and bringing the positive and sustainable change uh, and uh, improving organic business growth through innovation and uh, organizations like Japan, then CMC and Kela. As he said previously, why he is something different from Alotas is that he is involved in developing talent also. So he is not only innovator, he is not only in, in, in the business of developing technology, but he is well into development of talent. He is training young generating students, young, young generation of students. Especially in the emerging areas like e-mobility, then connectivity, and um, uh, he, his areas of interest are actually uh, robust control, uh, then diagnostic, machine learning, and uh, deep learning also. So, uh, though uh, uh, he holds doctoral degree uh, 20 years back, he is very much tuned with uh, the uh, today's development of technology, he is applying the modern concepts like machine learning and deep learning for uh, technological innovation scene. Uh, uh, you must have learned of the modern day system called as ADAS, automated driving assistance system ADAS. So, he is one of the pioneers in our country to uh, develop this type of ADAS. And, uh, we are fortunate enough to have Dr. Prakash with us and uh, I'm sure that uh, the basic notion of the theme of our conference will get reflected once we will be in receipt of uh, these thoughts about the sustainable development. And I'm sure that in due with the basic theme of our conference, it is not only advancement, but it is advancement for sustainable development. I'm sure that uh, his speech and his work as well as his guidance will we will uh, be carrying forward throughout our, our life to get inspired uh, from the uh, thought provoking speech from Dr. Prakash. So I welcome Dr. Prakash to deliver his speech and I request the dais if they are interested the better that they can also come forward and say thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was a very nice introduction, Professor. You know, I think uh, the obvious secret Nice to hear something good as so, Thank you very much. So, um, you know, I am, uh, this is my first time uh, to this college, so I was attending some meeting online and uh, my association with Madam is quite old, almost 25 years. So, you know, I am very privileged to be here and I am very, and, uh, very happy to see a lot of experts sitting at the panel, you know, and uh, this is, uh, this talk, uh, mainly what I am trying to cover here today is evaluation of control system in automotive and autonomous lines. 
So uh, you know, you must have heard that my interest is in controls. So I am getting R and D, and a lot of other things also. You know, like developing the product, <clears throat> a lot of complexity involved in manufacturing the product, and uh, you know, all the OEMs, you know, whatever vehicle you try, we have some or other controls in there. You know, that's how uh, you know our company. So what I want to uh, you know just let me jump into this topic. And I want to make it interactive. So if there is any question on a specific thing, you can ask. Because uh, you will also have a lot of opportunity to do study or to do research in some of these areas which I'm talking about. You know, a lot of papers, a uh, lot of effort, a lot of work going on in these fields uh, in, uh, uh, in you know, previous institutions. And uh, we can start right here. Some of So uh, I, this is what uh, this is what in the agenda. You know, we, we will uh, talk about uh, history of controls to give you an idea how this control is control system. You know, I'm sure when you are studying this in your graduation, how did, this is evolving from little bit of history to automotive, okay, and then we want to <coughs> take some examples of uh, application of control system in automotive. And then I want to just touch upon how the future looks like. You know, where is the research going? You know, this is where I stop it. So before I jump into uh, uh, the technical topic, I want to also now uh, let you know about uh, Varok. Maybe you have not heard about this company. I don't know how many of you have heard about this. This is uh, a leading Indian automotive technology group. Uh, with the global footprint, you know we have operation in uh, all over Asia, Europe, US, and we also have R&D centers in Pune, in Chennai, in Europe, and something in US. So we are across the globe, and uh, we have, uh, you know, we make products, especially you know like uh, electronic electrical products for uh, for automotive, and we also make products in polymer, metallic. Those are the other products like gear system, engine walls, those are the products that we make. And we also make lighting. You know, if you try some of the Mahindra or uh, Renault, the light is from us. The headlamp, the headlamp, the lighting system. Lighting system looks in here very, uh, very, you know, may not, may not be, I don't know, you know, there are not a lot, so many research is going on in India, but it's very complex. Know, the kind of optics that you want to create, the kind of electronic goes in there, this is really complex. And what is coming to uh, the future there with autonomous driving coming in is getting really interesting. So, uh, if you look at the control system, uh, you know, I, I picked up this topic because uh, you know, many of you guys, especially youngsters sitting there, are maybe studying this in their third year or fourth year, you know, and uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, you must be wondering what is application and, uh, you know, this is a good area to pick up your head you can actually develop in this area. So that's, that's an important thing. So in the, uh, if you look at uh, this all started, you know, if you look at the history, if you look, go back and start reading, I think it's all, uh, you know, it starts from uh, before Christ. Uh, Roman aqueduct or water level control. This is where sound control is mentioned. Maybe this is also mentioned in our own civilization, but uh, the record is not very clear. So whatever I got from this paper, I'm trying to end up. And then, uh, you know, there, there, if you come to uh, 17th and 18th century, you must have heard about this uh, uh, Hugen and Hook work on pendulum dynamics. So that is, you know, some work really pioneering work, helping in the plan modeling, control system, and uh, you know, high, high uh, degree of freedom and things like that. That's uh, something happens in 17th and 18th century, century. And that's where, you know, people have started using this precise measurement of time and location for navigation. Uh, that's where the time started happening. And same principle is used in controlling velocity of wind winds. James Watt also introduced heat engine. Uh, 
and uh, you know where uh, keep the constant pressure in the boiler. So these are all control systems where how it is involved. And then in 19th century, Maxwell provided precise mathematical expression for some erratic operation of steam engine and also provided some control mechanism. Because when uh, James Watt introduced uh, steam engine and the pressure control, there was some behavior pattern which was not expected. Okay, that's when Maxwell provided some precise expression uh, based on what I have shown here. Uh, this one, you know, this is very interesting to read, and so there is an involvement here. That's what I want to tell. And then uh, in uh, 1930, 1940, uh, two methods clearly emerged in control system, you know, like differential equations and frequency based. You know, that's we are studying until today. And uh, that's when uh, ASMB and IEEE recognized relevance of automatic control. That's now that time. That's when we had separate chapter for ITP in automotive control. And in 1460, again, we started improved experimentation and development during Second World War. Second World War, that is the time. Development of classical control design, especially frequency response. And 1960 is called era of classical controls. You know, a lot of frequency response approaches. A lot of uh, such, uh, lot of literature you will find. And 6080 is, uh, you know, this is the time frame uh, when uh, realization of model, the real world is more complex, non-linear and non-deterministic. Because here they re started realizing uh, if you control a real system, it's not easy because it's not very linear, it's very non-linear. So that's when uh, realization of the model is happening. If you can understand it's very non-linear. And dynamic programming by Delman, Delman filtering <coughs> by R. Delman, algebraic approach to learn system, you know, from the engine established foundation model. So, with this, classical control in 40 to 60, they realize the complexity of understanding a plan, <coughs> understanding a system. They move into uh, very complex, uh, you know, uh, programming, uh, algebraic approach, and that leads to modern. So this is the history, you know. and uh, if you then onwards, there is something new happening now. You know, 60, 60, 60 onwards, a lot of things happen. A lot of uh, when you try to implement this control system in a real embedded system, and when you try to put it on a vehicle or you put it on a uh, SL or aerospace, wherever, you start seeing a lot of issues. Okay, so. This is an example in 1925. If you see here, 1925 is uh, uh, somewhere before this, somewhere here. Uh, yeah, somewhere in the, you can say around this, when there is good understanding of differential equation and frequency response based approach. That's when uh, uh, Ricardo introduced diesel engines. And this happened in UK. This is a statement by Ricardo in 1925. Because when he created diesel engine, you know, James Watt, I told you, James Watt used steel engine, right? So when he introduced diesel engine, uh, the controlling of diesel fuel injection and getting power out of diesel engine are not very well controlled. So it's all mechanical control. And that's when he said the exhaust gas from the diesel engine has a characteristic of pungent and disagreeable smell. You know, he doesn't believe that the police will allow any large proportion of diesel engine vehicles in the street. So this is an inventor saying he has a lot of smell coming in from this diesel engine and it will not work. You know? People won't like it. But you know today diesel engines are great. Now we are making one more shift from diesel engine to electric vehicle. That's happening. Story. But what I want to tell is diesel engine is everywhere. Right? If you look at big steam uh, big ships move from steam to diesel, and if you look at old cars, all like one cars, SUVs, diesel engines. So what I want to tell is from here, standing now 2022, a lot of development happened. A lot of development in terms of 
and specially focus on control system. Now the development in control system is also associated with computational uh, how our computation uh, what you call the computation ability is increasing and same way control system also picks up. You know today we talk about NVIDIA you know where we can run big numbers we can in the 80s we were talking about neural networks which was very difficult to implement in real time because the, com the computation complexity was very very high but today with the NVIDIA coming in with the you know very high end processor coming in so what I want to tell you is all possible because of computation also. I am not talking about computation here. I am only talking about the control system approach of view. Okay, then uh, what happened is uh, in 65-75, so in 1925 we introduced diesel engine, 65-75 time frame. They realized uh, the lot of emission coming out of these diesel engines or in general uh, so they came up with a clear air act, you know, and there is a very stringent regulation in US, Europe, and Japan, not in India at that time. Because we were just picking up, right? There were no many diesel engines at that time. And uh, uh, so this to, to meet this sorry, to meet this clear regulation act, what they said is you cannot emit like this, your diesel engine. Cannot emit like this because this is not good for people, not good for society. So then they came up with, uh, you know, uh, closed loop air fuel injection controls, invention in PICO and uh, you know some catalysts, increased use of control theory in modeling and all. So what they, they have done is to look at this engine, this is the engine ignition, and the engine ignition now working closely. You know, there is an ECU here and there is some sensors, it takes the exhaust. The measurement here and decide what injection uh, fuel injection will be done. So this actually started happening during this time. Till that time there was no close to measuring this and doing something on the injection. So this actually started happening. So with this we are able to control this and then uh, you know many things introduced uh, into the automotive world. Variable wall frame, direct injection, CVT, multivariable approach. No, variable no? during this time frame. And then the emission become more stringent. You know, there, there are, you can make a note or you can ask questions. Uh, after treatment, hybrid electric, fuel cell, beam. So all these things is connected to emission. We want to protect the environment. We want to see that there is no pollutants in the air. So all these things is coming now. I have just mentioned in that order. So, uh, so if you look today, you know, if you look at any automotive uh, cars today, so many, uh, you know, control systems are there in the vehicle. You know, there are powertrain controls, traction control, stability control, chassis control. So these are all, you know, done through some algorithm and some uh, electronic control. So you are. Uh, this is brilliant. Sidestone of uh, the uh, battery electric vehicle, fuel cell, hybrid electric. So, uh, what about the plug in hybrid vehicle? Yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, but plug in hybrid electric, you can consider part of it. hybrid electric only. I didn't mention that separately, but it's part of hybrid electric. Part of it, yeah. Plug in is also there. Plug in. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so what happens is so many systems, you know, if you look at this, night vision, driver alertness monitoring, even uh, attractive uh, cabin submission, so many, so many things are in the vehicle now. In India also, if you look at uh, autonomous, autonomous driving, you know, there are different levels, L1, L2, L3, up to L5. L5 is where driver can just sit, I mean, there's no driver. <laughs> Anybody can sit, car will take you, right? But L1, L2, L3 are different levels of assistance. So here, that is possible. Different levels of assistance is possible. In India also, you can get these type of cars. So now, uh, coming to one example that I want to give you. Now, I mentioned about uh, emission regulation. So I try to show here 
on the x-axis is the uh, NOx, nitrogen oxide, and the right axis is uh, particulate matter. You know, that is what is emission out of the diesel engine. So what happened in the 1992, European Union said, okay, you can emit this much NOx and this much PM. And as time passed, this has become very stringent. Okay? And now they say you can only emit this much NOx and this much PM. And this is only possible due to proper computation, due to proper control systems. Okay, so this is the involvement because you know the mother nature is forced you to invent, right? And that is very, very, very common thing. So this regulation by the governments actually force you to invent, force you to do certain things, force you to do research, force you to come up with some solution. So this is what is happening. So this is, I personally worked on this, that's why I'm showing this. But to meet this kind of stringent regulation, what we have done is, uh, you see this, this is an exhaust emission, you can see the picture also. This is a big truck, you know it's a big truck. So you can see here, we have certain uh, certain assembly. There is something called lean nox map and something called diesel particulate uh, filter and silicon catalyst reactor. So and there is a ECU where where the control system resides. Okay, so this is the system, and here this this lean nox flat is a catalyst. Okay, it's a chemistry reaction. It's a highly formed structure. It is, uh, uh, it is behaving in some fashion. So what it does is, it, uh, it, take, it absorbs a lot of knots as it then, you know, as, as you try, it absorbs knots and keep it here. And uh, when the knox is full, so there is a limitation for this lean knox so If the truck is driving, say 1000 km, after 1000 km, lean knox part cannot map knox. Down. So there is a method called punch. Punch is nothing but burn that knob. Okay, there is a chemical reaction. To burn, you need to do some hydrocarbon injection, and then you burn. It. So the problem given to us was how do you know that the intrinsic step is full? How do you know the intrinsic step is full? Then only you can do a better mechanism. Otherwise, you will not be so what we have done, you know, we, we look at many factors which create this uh, in NOx plan. I sorry the NOx, and then we came up with a method. Okay, looking at the air pressure ratio, you know, looking at the uh, mass air flow temperature, and also there is a NOx filter here, NOx concentration, and there are some more factors. You can actually de determine. How this is full? How much is uh, empty out, out of the full? Now this took took about uh, one year experimentation and research to come up with a model to predict that the NOx trap is full now. You know, if you drive further, NOx will just come out, and you need to do a next mechanism to reduce to, to take that NOx out. So what happened is, to, to conclude here, this NOx coming out of this, there is no NOx here. If you do this properly, what comes out of where is oxygen and water. That clean outcome you can get. You know? So this is what I want to tell you, this is where we stand as couple of years back. Because, uh, you know, because of this stringent regulation. And what control system, you know, like you, who actually understand this, who understand mathematics, who understand system can play a role. Now the future is coming, you know, a lot of new things. So you guys have a lot of opportunity uh, to work in uh, and do a lot of things. So I really enjoyed my many years in automotive and this is wonderful job. You can look back, the technology is just increasing like this is another example, you know, like hybrid vehicle control perspective. So this is the hybrid vehicle. You you know you know the meaning of hybrid vehicle, right? 
So you have a, a gasoline engine here, petrol engine or diesel, and you also have a battery. You have uh, an inverter, which is nothing but the motor controller, and then you have a motor, right? Then you have a summation gearbox, and this gasoline and this motor both will drive this axle, you know, the drive wheels in in some fashion. Either both will drive or one of them will drive. That is something determined by control. Who will drive when? That is a very, very difficult problem. So what you see is, you look at this, this is called drive cycle. You know? And here this is spine and this is speed. So you see how the vehicle actually moving in a sick environment. Like if you want to see in Karad, you want to introduce or Karad or you, know, you should now, what is the drive cycle? How the vehicle is behaving, right? So this is the white vehicle, and this is a this is a this side is okay. So now, what happens is you need to really determine, you know, as the vehicle pick up speed, as the vehicle stops, how you do the changeover between gasoline and motor, so that I get very good feeling now, so that I meet this emission norms properly. So I don't want to emit too much. So what I want to tell you, this is an actually an optimization problem. Your objective, objective function is fuel consumption. Because you reduce fuel consumption, you, uh, your, your carbon footprint will reduce, your NOx will reduce, you can go to waste, right? And uh, constraints, you know the acceleration. You really want to accelerate the vehicle. So maybe I, I may not have battery, I might have to use gasoline. So that means I use gasoline means fuel economy is going back. So that is the acceleration determined that. And parameters like gear shape, energy source, what is the battery capacity, recuperation opportunity. So these are the uh, parameters. So again, I am sure you are studying uh, optimization, right? Maybe in uh, your master. So this is how we apply this in the real world scenario. So that's what I want. Another thing, again, you know, this is the battery operated uh, electric vehicle and controls. So you see here, this is a VLDC motor, and uh, in VLDC motor is very common now. You can see in all the electric vehicles, many electric vehicles. If you go to North India, you will see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, electric vehicle new charts, right? So those are all operated in uh, VLDC motor. And there, we have. Uh, uh, we have a uh, inverter, and in this inverter is driven by a control system. You know, and this, if you see, the key thing is how do you control the current? You know, this this piece that will determine the efficiency, that will determine the reliability of the product. Okay, so the controlling of this current, is, there are various ways of doing this, uh, but that becomes very very important. Another view of another example where the control system is playing with you. So you see this now. What I spoke to you now, we just go back. Uh, the control system history started with diesel engine in automotive. There's no much control, only pressure control from, from the James Watt or Maxwell spine. And then you slowly moved into more, uh, uh, you know, complex controls. And you are able to introduce close to, close to feedback to reduce pollution. And now we are coming to EV and we are actually controlling the current, right? We were controlling the fuel injection before. Now we control the current. Okay, that's how the UI is So another thing which is very important, you know, is this physical behavior of any system is important for us to control, right? So today, if you see uh, any automotive, you have engine, vehicle dynamics, tire dynamics, electric motors, battery chemistry. I'm just picking up an electric vehicle. If you take a gasoline or in, uh, IC, I mean, these will be different. And then you you have to now driver perception of environment, uh, you know, ethical thinking, decision making. Everything is done by driver. You know, when you drive, you take a decision, right? When to stop, when to accelerate, where to park. This is your decision. And if you are supposed to hit somebody, you take a decision that you know 
break the car. You cannot break your you are very sure that you are going to hit somebody. That ethical decision is good. Right? Maybe you will take a sharp steering and you might hit something else, but you will avoid that accident. And you might get hurt in some Right? Or, or there is, there is, this is a real scenario because there is a pedestrian walking on the street and you are supposed to hit. There is a young, young uh, people walking and there is some animal. And you are supposed to are driving that, and you are supposed to, you cannot avoid, you have to hit someone whom you should hit. So you will think, okay, these youngsters we should avoid, and maybe we can hit to that animal. That's, the, that's how we think. But what I am trying to tell you, not the ethical thinking. Now, as you move, uh, tomorrow's almost. This driver's perception of environment, ethical thinking, decision making will be driven by algorithms, will be done by some EC sitting somewhere. So that is the complexity coming in. You, you got what I am saying, right? You are, you are replacing driver with some intelligence. Now that intelligence will have to take uh, such ethical uh, decisions. Suppose, suppose you know, I will, I will give one example. You have an accident on the road highway. Police come and deliver the tire. Police will look at, okay, what is the driver doing? Was he drunk? And uh, what, what, where was he? Is he on the right side? That is the indicator on. Many things he can check. But suppose you imagine a normal, a normal driving situation. No driver. And it hits. How the, uh, you know, how this, how this, uh, you know, this, this is become very complicated. Who you should charge? Who is the culprit? Is it the car maker? Is it the one who developed that algorithm? Or at that time there is no 5G connectivity, something happened. Who is the culprit? Is it the airtel provider? Things become very complex. You know, exactly. So same thing applies to controls because you are now moving into this an automotive of tomorrow where you are you are introducing a lot of intelligence. So how the control is going to change? So this is what I am seeing now. You have a classic controls where you do tuning, pen test, calibration time in a very familiar world to us. We all Personally, you know, all control engineers very thorough with this, and we have done this in the past. Now, modern linear control system estimation, modern nonlinear control analysis comes in the picture, where you now you know the physics of the system, you know the you know how to model that, you know how to validate it. You know, you can introduce a lot of uh, modern controls here, but as you move here. You are getting into unknown physics. You know, you are getting into a uh, lot of data. You are need to crunch a lot of data to make decisions. You, know, you cannot only depend on just uh, physics model. You have to depend on data, and you need to have an hybrid approach. You know, maybe machine learning, fuzzy or neural network kind of approach in the future. So I want to give another example here. This is the classic control example. This is also my personal experience. So here you have a fuel control module. Actually, what happened? You know, just to give you an idea, you drive a car. Your fuel tank is at the back, you know, in the, behind the, in the seat, and the fuel lines run from the back to the front to the engine. And as you accelerate. Is injected to the engine to drive. Now, many times what happens, the tank is there, the fuel level will be low, you may not get enough pressure in the, in the engine, and you may not get acceleration you know, if you don't do, do it properly. So, what we do, there is something called a fuel control module and the, and the fuel tank. You know, and there is an injection pump, and there is a motor. 
and there is a there is an issue to drive this uh, motor. So what we do is we will ensure that there is enough pressure available in these lines so that fluid injected properly through a pressure feedback. Now what happens when we try to implement this in India? Uh, they said this pressure sensor is uh, pretty expensive. You know the overall system, you know this motor, this ECU, and this uh, fuel injection pump. The cost of uh, this pressure sensor is more than so. We had a problem that how to identify an alternate of this pressure sensor. Can we remove this pressure sensor altogether? So we looked at the physics here, and we finally we found out this can be moved some and that uh, you know uh, we understand the physics because you know uh, the pressure uh, in the fuel and the fuel lines you know if the pressure is less or more you know from the current of the motor you know because motor pump is spinning spin the pump you know what is the pressure but from the current so there is an estimation possible from the current values it's complex but it is possible so what i want to tell is in such example you know, we can actually use this, or even we can go to some kind of uh, neural approach. So you have a lot of data from all over the world to understand how this is behaving. So we can actually use some intelligent or some machine learning approach uh, to replace the pressure And this is some of, one of the patterns that we apply. So, so what I want to tell is from this world, how this is moving into a you know, very we are reducing cost, we are making uh, the same answer using some new technology. So if you look at uh, autonomous driving control system, you know, I mentioned in night vision, driver alertness, lane detection, navigation, anti-lock braking, all these topics are very, very complex and very good to solve in control system perspective. Now, come to this uh, autonomous composition. Ensuring right relationship between a vehicle and its environment. That is the key thing. Autonomous driving. You must have heard uh, Tesla, autonomous car. So, this happens actually. You know, any new technology always will have some issue. But as a society, we need to ensure that you come over. So look at this perception, gaining information about environment, situational awareness, usable model of the environment, planning, identifying what systems should do to achieve the goal, controls, achieving those actions. This is something that is getting into a normal drive. So this this was done by a driver before. Now this has to be done by some intelligent agencies. So what is there in the vehicle? The, to bring this perception, you have camera system, you know, you have radar, you have long range radar, short range radar, this kind of stuff. You also have ultrasonic sensors, you know, and uh, somewhere, somewhere ultrasonic sensors, somewhere camera, somewhere radar. These sensors will give you all these topics, you know, perception, awareness, and planning. And later controls will take an action. This is how very in general it happens. So if you look at this, now what what we to tell you? This is a how any innovation happens. You know, this is the time. This is the visibility. So if you see here, some innovation happens, and people start working on it. And this is the peak of inflated expectations. The entire society will think this innovation is going to give a lot of. But actually, what happens, you know, then you realize it's not easy. You know, it is, you know, you're, you, it is not easy and it drops down. And somewhere here, you get the merit of the of this invention. This is very common. <coughs> because your expectation of the society is so high that uh, whenever an innovation happens, you, you have, always have an inflated expectation. This is why startup companies. When they start with a new idea, they sell ideas. So 
the expectation, you know, to the those rules, so you would like to accept very high at that time. So here, what I want to tell you is, when this, actually this deep learning, machine learning is somewhere here, because now people are thinking, uh, you know, what is the return of investment, because it's very, uh, very, very expensive, uh, the kind of skill set we find in India. So if you invest on such skill set, what are what am I getting? But I'm sure a little later, it will be more productive. And I feel this will be productive when control theory, signal processing, and mathematical optimization. That is where it is. But I feel this too will come together somewhere here to give us uh, more uh, you know, uh, benefits in the business. So, give you one example. Uh, this is a bike problem. So what bike problem says is, uh, you camera in the vehicle detects objects in the front. You know, like lidar will detect objects also, distance also. But camera also detects, you know, oh, there is a truck at the front, there is a building, there is a pole at the front, and then they have to maneuver. And one of the tough problems is identifying the bike roads. It is still a difficult problem. You can identify traffic light, you can identify moving cars, and there are very good algorithms capable of doing that. But identifying a cyclist is still a tough problem. So what they do, they use a deep 3D box. Uh, 3D box is nothing but can be use three-dimensional view of the cyclist to get an idea that they are cyclists. You know? And that three-dimensional box is given to neural network to identify cyclists on the road. So deep 3D box can identify 89% of car, but only 70% of bike. So when you make this 3D box on an image, you know that can be 2D box, that can be 3D box. So 2D box, so you can't use it for bike. So we are developing 3D box. And then 88% uh, of car orientation and only 59% of the bike. You never know, is the bike going that side or coming this side? Augmenting camera with lidar and radar can help, but orientation is still an issue. So, can we use camera plus lidar and radar to tell, you know, the bike and the bike with direction? This situation can be complex. That's what I said about So, in, this, in such situation, I think how control system going to uh, going to evolve. You know, I feel the data. There can be some uh, machine learning uh, algorithm. There is some parameters. There are some inputs, and there can be you know some kind of speed speed model or some kind of differential equation, and then you get an output. This is where it is going. Machine learning and control is an emerging. So, uh, so what I think, you know, this is this I thought I should tell you. All things appear and disappear because of the concurrent of causes and conditions. Nothing ever exists entirely alone. Everything is in relation to everything else. So I want to, you know, tell you that these things coming together, you know, nothing alone can solve the problem. The problem is so complex that you need to bring different technologies together to solve it. Okay. So this is my last slide. So I don't know, you know, uh, how much I made you understand or what motivation you have on this topic. But if there are any questions, I am fine to take. Anything you want to ask? Regarding bright cycles, there are different bright cycles. Worldwide standard consider maybe European standard right sector or urban right sector. So what's the setting to follow? And to implement that aspects or e mobility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at India, there are certain ARAI uh, ARAI defined some right cycles. You know, but uh, most of those right cycles emerged. Uh, over the period of time, uh, you know.
know, to test IC engines. So, Government of India, I remember a couple of years, years back, we had a conference to decide what should be the driving cycle for electric vehicles. Will that be same or will that be different? Uh, and uh, I, I know IIT Bombay, IIT Chennai, there is some work, there are some literature available to create these drive cycle from our, on our roads. But to answer your questions, Indian drive cycles are available, uh, especially by the ICAT, ARI, you know, they have certain drive cycle. That's what we use in our uh, simulations, in our development. Uh, but if you ask, if you go one more level, I think we need to relook at those drive cycles from the electric vehicle perspective. So that is not been done. So any Indian drive cycle is okay for India. But you know, nowadays what people are doing, especially all these EV guys, EV electric vehicle manufacturers, they also have telematics in their devices. You know, telematics is connected to the car. So I, as an OEM, I know exactly what is the drive cycle my vehicle going to. And I will now Pune, Delhi, I might even I can you know change the battery size. So I have an idea. So what is the drive cycle in Pune? What is the drive cycle in Delhi? It is possible. But just from the vehicle speed and time, you cannot simply derive drive cycle. There are some statistical method you need to derive that. You know, we ourselves we have a cloud solution, and uh, we there are lakhs of vehicles connected now using our cloud in the India. So we have a very good idea how that drive cycle looks like, but that is not government, you know, approved <laughs> kind of thing that we have in there. Okay. So, Sir, here. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, actually, what is going to happen? What are the control systems you need to develop it? It is based on some mathematical equations and all this. So that is one one part. And another one, if you look into the main kind of a biological system, biological system drives in something different because if you look at our own body, how it works, it senses and it takes an entire control and kind of things. Why cannot a future will be based on this biological study and development control system something or is there any kind of enough work going on that particular front and that is one thing. Another one, there isn't a concept called as an energy based control system, mm -hmm. energy based. Energy based. Energy based means you are going to identify how many, in the, in the, what kind of energy is there in each and every system and then based on that maintain a minimum potential energy yeah. of it. And Develop an equation for that and develop a control along that. So, so how we can correlate? Because this is what uh, uh, physical systems and biological systems and biological systems can we bring that concept into this and mix it together and create a hybrid kind of a control system which can be used for any kind of an applications like robotics is there, vehicle is there, and so many places. Yes, I think uh, you know uh, number one. You mentioned the uh, application where uh, equations and all. Used. Yeah. Second thing is from combining biological and uh, yeah, biological and analogies and analogies. Kind of yeah. I think the first thing you know uh, there are a lot of things, lot of work. lot of things because the example which I have shown you is that only. You know, like uh, after 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 treatment, we have motor controls. Or uh, even if you come to autonomous driving, you know, uh, there are a lot of. But what happens, you know, uh, Professor, if you look at the overall uh, uh, overall algorithms in a vehicle, uh, take an example of lane change assistance, which is having controls, you know, because we use, uh, people use Kalman filter to, uh, to get an idea about if I am on the same lane or not. Now, if you look at the overall gamut, the control system will be only 10 to 15 percent. Remaining thing is very complex software to do some filtering, to do some decision on what is coming out of this. So that is one topic. Second topic, surely you know I am sure if you look at the neural network is getting very famous now because uh, because of the computational ability. You know, because Nvidia is 
means the leader there. NVIDIA processors are so powerful. You can easily uh, use some neural network or even genetic algorithm you know, to do that kind of uh, computation. And that I personally experienced possible. You know, so there are people working on this. Uh, and uh, one another one more thing, driver behavior. You know, now people are talking, uh, keep a camera, uh, take the temperature of the driver because he's holding the uh, wheel, sitting on the seat. So temperature it can be. Using his behavior, his eye detection, you know, and there are very complex uh, uh, algorithms coming in to predict driver behavior. So that is that there also is the biological thing and this thing coming together. And one more thing, uh, so if you are going to have using a neural network, see what happens when you are going to store the information into the neural network. We store in terms of a you know, modification of the numbers. Ultimately, we are modifying some weight values. Into the correct, correct. It's an optimization problem. Yeah. So can we have a you know, kind of a you know, concept like we can create a hard disk, which is create a hard disk, which takes some care of this algorithm itself. Because ultimately, we are spending much of time on storing, generating the data and storing the data. If we train that network in this fashion, all the time this information is going to store in the numbers. Yeah, yeah. And later on, we can extract it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, percentage of prediction of this, what are the information we stored it, like the same way our brain also works. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Brain works in this fashion. Whenever I see you in next, uh, maybe <coughs> any year, Tool. So I can recognize you. The similar fashion can we have in a kind of a systems or simple uh, small memory and uh, that 